A piece of advice for any budding detectives out there. When someone declines to answer your question, when they tell you the information is classified and they'd really love to tell you, honest to God, they want to tell you so bad. Ah, oh, shucks, they just can't. That's the point in which you need to get concerned when you need to be worried about whether or not you can trust that person. I can feel Fidget in the back of my head, wriggling uncomfortably as she accesses and reads those thoughts in my head. She can't get sad, though, even if she does a good enough job pretending. So why should I care if my thoughts about not trusting her make her upset? She's not really upset because she's not really... real. As she's fonding of telling me, she's not alive. She's a fidget. And so if she won't answer my question, won't tell me about the extent of her abilities, then I can't ever really trust her. Can I? Again, she's squirming. She heard that. If you don't want to hear what I think of you, stay out of my thoughts. The wriggling goes still. I think she's logged off of my thoughts, or she's just hiding herself. Either way, she's clearly had enough of hanging around in my head. I'm right with you there. This isn't a pleasant place to be anyway. I sit back and rub my face before casting another glance around the sterile hallway. It's no more than a few strides across, tall walls, white tiles covering every surface, Every now and then are a few windows, dark and impossible to peer through. And of course, there are cameras. At least five are pointing right at me. As an exercise, from the moment we arrived in the facility, I've been trying to imagine how I would break in. All the way through the welcome area and down five floors to this lonely hallway. As of right now, it's impossible. I can't see a single path through without cameras catching me out, without a guard passing by or any real cover. There are security checkpoints before every major department as well as permanent guard stations at the entrance and exits to the elevators. I let out a frustrated growl and it echoes down the hallway. It's, for the most part, silent. There's a distant chatter coming from the streets outside and from a room down the hallway. Nothing in harmony is ever really quiet. There's always something, or someone, talking. Lancer's footsteps announce his approach before I see him come around the corner. He's had to get me a security pass. Despite being Shale's personal detective, or whatever my job title is... I still need to get an official pass to walk around the cloning facility. Lancer hands me a small green card. Don't lose this. In fact, don't leave my side. Just behave. I fix a massive grin to my face. Hey, man, I've been on my best behavior all day. I should get the Corporate Cop of the Year award. Or at least a cookie, on account of how fucking civil and professional I've been. I can see from the way his eyebrow twitches, from the slight drain of color from his face, that I've managed to make Lancer's day at least 10% worse with one sentence. I can't help but laugh as I stand up and clap him on the shoulder. Let's go ask some heads and knock some questions. I walk fast, taking long and determined strides, leaving a befuddled and infuriated Lancer to catch up as I follow the signs to the security room. Irritating Lancer seems the perfect remedy for curing a dark mood. I'll keep that in mind for later. Yeah, an hour after the emergency broadcast went out, the whole building started getting power fluctuations. The security guard leaned back in his chair, fingers crossed over his stomach as he peered up at the wall of screens, reflecting views from the hundreds of cameras. The whole building appeared in front of me. Not an inch of it was uncovered. Even my own room was visible from three different angles. 
I'll have to have a word with Emery about that. Cameras in my room make for an unhappy aria. The guard continued his explanation. Yeah, the building's backup generators were outside on the balcony and were damaged by the mass rains. The whole building was without power for at least two hours. That's uh, when the break-ins must have happened. I raise my index finger. Uh, hold up there. We'll come to the conclusions. You just give us the information. Lancer side-eyes me and cocks a brow. When else was the break-in supposed to have happened if not during the power outage? Tapping the side of my head, I lean against a nearby steel table, a shiver running up my arms. Why are these security rooms always so dark and cold? They would have needed power to delete Conrad's memory backups. So, even if they used the outage to get in and destroy his clone body, they'd have needed to be here whilst there was power for any digital work. Maybe they, uh, hacked the system from outside the building, the guard offers up. Lancer shakes his head. No good. Fidget would have needed to be online for any kind of networked connection to be active. And someone couldn't just hack into the system with Fidget online? Nope, Lancer says. I chew my bottom lip, considering the possibilities. <sighs> I need to go and find the network technicians, Lancer says. Stay here and I'll be right back. Maybe they can help us get to the bottom of this. Yeah, sure thing, I mutter as he leaves the room. As soon as the door closes behind him, I turn back to the guard. You said the generators are on the third floor. Uh, yeah. Have they been inspected yet? Oh, nah. They, uh, we've got Fidget's readout. She said the generators took mass rain damage. I nod slowly. Except Fidget can't be trusted. I'm gonna head up there and check out the generators. Uh, you only have a green pass, ma'am. You can't get to them. Oh, that's all right. I flash him a smile as I open the door. I'll make a plan. Using the pass I picked from Lancer's pocket earlier, when I was patting his shoulder, I open the door to the backup generator balcony. I suppose I could have just asked him, but I think it's best if I just go at it alone. I can trust myself at the very least. Probably. Fidget. Yes, Arya? There's no sign in her voice that anything between us has changed. Her voice remains chipper, upbeat, either a good front, or she just really doesn't care. My money's on the ladder. She's not a person. Is access through these doors recorded? They are, yes. Via the passes, I assume. Of course. That's how we know who enters the door and when. And the doors have their own independent power source, right? Yes. Was a pass used to enter this door during the power outage? I have no record of it. I stride across the balcony. The floor is entirely covered in small stones that crunch beneath my bare feet. Some attempt at looking fancy, I assume. A head pressed against a gray stone wall is a long row of dark green metal boxes. The backup generators. I run my hand across the surface of each one. No hum from inside. They're not in standby mode, and certainly not active at all. And yet there's no sign of damage to the outer shell of the generators. I thought so. Thought what? Generators like these are supposed to be outside because of the fumes they create when they're running actively. And if they have to be outside, then they're always at risk of being exposed to the mass rains. Right? Right. So them taking damage from the mass rains and shutting off makes absolutely no sense to me. This time my voice is sharp when I speak. After all, Fidget's the one who said the rains damaged the generators. My sensors, Fidget says slowly. She recognizes the accusation. And the internal reading from the generators explicitly show damage caused by the mass rain interference. And in my eyes, I respond dryly. Don't see any signs of damage. I'm starting to think the people of Harmony are so used to having you do everything for them that they forgot how to check things for themselves. So what damage the generators? I'd like to take a look inside, I say, running my fingers over the control panels. There are no handles or other handholds to open them. I run my fingers on the outlines of each control panel. No sign of tampering or being forced open. But I don't see any handles. They can only be accessed through me. I hum for a moment, 
considering where this line of inquiry might lead me. Can you open them up for me? Fidget says nothing for a moment. And for a moment, I think she's going to refuse me again. Another classified answer, eh, Fidget? But my thoughts are cut off by a quick click as the panels all pop open. Fidget doesn't say anything else. Slowly, I open one of the panels and examine the generator's interior. I smile, though it's a strangely concerned smile. I step over to the next panel and open it. Same story as before. One by one, I open each control panel and examine the interiors of each generator. You were right, Fidget. Pardon? These generators have been absolutely destroyed by mass rains. Everything inside the control panels have been battered with lots of small, heavy objects. The damage is consistent with everything else I've seen hit by the mass rains this morning. So you're saying I was right? Yeah, but remind me to kick the security team for not checking this out themselves. The damage here is internal only. The casing of the generators are completely fine. So what happened exactly? Someone opened up these panels and left the interiors exposed to the mass rains and then closed them again when the time was right. That's not possible, Fidget says, concern in her voice. She knows exactly where I'm taking this line of thought. There's no sign of damage on the control panel exteriors. No sign of them being forced open. Which means that you opened the generator doors. I did no such thing! Fidget exclaims. Oh my, did I upset you, Fidget. What a shame. Stop thinking those things about me! She yells again. Why are you being so mean to me? I already told you, Fidget. If you don't want to hear my thoughts, then stay out of my head. My voice is hard and cold and dead, and I don't like it. It's true that Fidget's been very kind to me. She's been a comfort at times, but she's been in my head almost non-stop. My thoughts don't get to be private, and yet she gets to keep secrets from me? That's not fair. Life isn't fair, Arya! Fidget snaps. You don't have to take it out on me. The evidence isn't in your favor, Fidget. Who else opened the generator door? Who else could have dealt with the security cameras and the doors? Who else could control a human body and walk him through a mass rain to Silverstone Warehouse? I didn't say whatever or not I could control a human body. That's just as good as outright admitting it. No, it's not. And what about your little glitch? Your accident when I asked you about my past? Wasn't my fault! But you know something about it! Not actively! What the hell does that even mean? Aria, please! I ask a question, and you cut out. Then a strange voice talks over the public broadcast zone, speaking a language I don't understand and speaking only to me. Then the mass rains come. You're deactivated, and Conrad, of all the people in Harmony, turns up dead in a way that could only have happened with your help. It's a coincidence. I doubt it. Why are you being like this, Arya? Excuse me? Why are you so hateful? I don't have a chance to answer her question. Not before the static that has been growing behind Fidget's voice overtakes every other sound in my ear. An image appears on my heads-up display in the bottom right corner, the symbol of the analog movement. I look up, gazing out into the city, looking at the massive screens displayed on the sides of buildings. They all bear the same image. Moving quickly, I rush back into the building. Sure enough, every screen, hanging from the walls, on people's computers, and the devices in their hands, shows the same symbol. This isn't like the last interruption. This broadcast is going out to everyone. Thank you, Widget. How long are we secure? Widget. 
他们正在想办法夺回控制权，想办法控制广播。我们目前还安全，现在我只能保证这些。Good girl, keep me updated. 去你的 ！Hello, Harmony City. You can call me Connor. And you can call me Connor. You didn't need the last name, did you? You probably know us as the leaders of the analog movement. You're probably asking why we've interrupted your breakfast drivel. Well, put down your spoon. We are here today to teach you a nice little story about hatred. We are here to tell you who murdered a man named Conrad and how they did it. If you're good, we'll even tell you why. Are you ready? The time is a quarter to two. This is the BBC for mothers and children. Corporate model most efficient. Structure history has ever shown us. Today to tell you a story called Big Fat Cat. Are you sitting comfortably? Then I'll begin.